Dear colleagues, I'm Christoph Wiener from the medical faculty of the University of Duisburg Essen in Germany. And I would like to report uh, nine interesting studies which were presented at the International Stroke Conference in Phoenix, Arizona in the beginning of February of 2024. And I restrict myself to uh, studies that were published and obviously underwent peer review. I would like to start uh, with thrombolysis. At the moment, we have two uh, possibilities. One is altiblase and the other one is tenectiblase. Tenectiblase is given as a bolus, which is more convenient. But until now, the randomized studies only included patients in the four and a half hour time window. And now the timeless study published in the New England Journal of Medicine investigated tenectiblase compared with altiblase in a time window between four and a half and 24 hours in people with, who at uh, functional imaging had uh, penumbra. And this study included 458 patients, 77% received uh, thrombectomy, and the primary endpoint was uh, modified ranking scale, and there was no difference between altiblase and the ten tenectiblase in terms of functional outcome and bleeding complications. The second uh, study which was uh, published in stroke was from China, and this study was a dose-finding study with retiblase, and retiblase uh, is cheaper than altiblase and tenectiblase and has a longer half-life. And this uh, dose-finding study included 180 patients in a four-and-a-half-hour uh, time window, and they compared uh, two doses of retiblase with altiblase, and there was no difference in functional outcome and symptomatic intragranial bleeds, and there clearly we need uh, larger phase three trials. The third study was a meta-analysis published in JAMA and investigated the question in which time window is the addition of thrombolysis to thrombectomy superior to thrombectomy alone. And this meta-analysis uh, included uh, 2,300 uh, patients, 1,160 1, received the combination thrombolysis and thrombectomy, and 1,153 1, only thrombectomy. And the benefit of additional thrombolysis was time-dependent, and the benefit disappeared after a time interval of 2 hours and 20 minutes after the beginning of the symptoms. And this has clearly practical implications for this combination therapy. My next study was, study, was published in JAMA. It's from Ch China. And it investigated whether the addition of uh, corticosteroids to thrombectomy improves the outcome. This is based on the preclinical data in animals which indicates that, uh, for example, cortisone might uh, prevent uh, reperfusion injury. And this uh, small, uh, this study with 1,680 patients showed no benefit of additional uh, prednisone in terms of functional outcome. There was uh, a superiority for the reduction of mortality and bleeding complications, but in clinical practice, I don't think we would add uh, prednisone or methyl prednisolone in these patients. My next study is the SELECT study. SELECT was a study which uh, is already published and uh, investigated thrombectomy in people with large strokes and, and clearly showed a benefit. Now, the initial publication had a 90-day follow-up time, and now the authors published a one-year follow-up in these patients. And they could show that also after one year, there was a still a benefit of thrombectomy. There was no difference in mortality after one year. This was published in Lancet. Now, what is the purpose of, uh, thrombect of uh, thrombolysis in acute ischemic stroke? The purpose is to dissolve the clot. But uh, there is also an important contribution of platelets, and therefore it is always discussed whether it makes sense to also add uh, antiplatelet drugs uh, to uh, thrombolysis. And this is a study now which investigated a new glycoprotein 6 inhibitor, glenzozimab, which is an antibody fragment. And this was a small dose finding study, a proof of concept study. And it indicated that this combination has no increased bleeding risk. There was also no difference in uh, benefit, but there was a trend uh, towards lower mortality. And therefore, we need a phase three trial to look at this combination therapy. 
And now the fourth study investigating whether anticoagulation is superior to aspirin in patients with ESUS embolic stroke of undetermined sorts. We already have, unfortunately, three negative studies. And now Arcadia was published in JAMA. This was a, a study with 1,100 patients, and they only included patients who had atrial cardiopathy as an indicator of a, a high risk to develop atrial fibrillation. Now, this trial was terminated prematurely for futility. There were 40 strokes in both groups, and therefore there was no difference. Uh, there was, interestingly, a higher rate of intragranial bleeds with aspirin compared to apixaban. And the next study comes for, from Korea and answers the question, is there really a benefit when we replace vitamin K antagonists by NOACs? And they cover the time period between 2011 and 2019, and say they investigated 12,500 patients who had atrial fibrillation. And they could show that with the increase in the prescription of NOACs from zero at the beginning to 71% in 2019, there was a significant reduction in, uh, in the combined endpoint of stroke myocardial infarction and mortality from uh, 28% uh, and originally 21%. And my last one is what should we do for antithrombotic therapy in people with carotid dissection? This is a retrospective uh, observational study in uh, 16 countries. And they recruited or they followed 3,600 patients which were anticoagulated and 2,450 who received an antiplatelet drug. And uh, there was a very low risk of ischemic stroke, 4.4% and only 0.8% major bleedings. Uh, there was no difference between uh, anticoagulation and aspirin or antiplatelet drugs for ischemic stroke. There was a slightly increased risk of bleeding with anticoagulation at day 180. So we still have obviously both options, antiplatelet drugs and anticoagulation. This was a very interesting conference and I encourage you to go to the webpage of the Congress, there are many more studies which were reported and you can find the outcome on the webpage. I'm Christoph Diener from the Medical Faculty of the University of Duisburg-Essen. Thank you very much for listening and watching.